We'd like to give a concentration. <laughs> now, Raymond here to Brandon. Mr. Shaw. Mr. Shaw. Okay. I can remember the Russell. I'm glad you put that together. <laughs> okay, I'm Kevin Craig, and this is Jenny McCall. And we're real excited to be able to come over here and kind of present a little bit about what our business model is and kind of how we've learned to operate. And we like doing this because we feel like in some cases we can help people save a lot of money because so many people are trying to sell you things. Um, first of all, this is not a disclaimer. We're not selling anything. We got no coaching that we're selling. We got no programs, no systems, no anything, nothing to buy. There's nothing to sign up for at the end. So this is just all a way that you can do business with the the information that you have, the systems that you have, the cell phone that you have, and the database that you have, as long as you're adding to it. And we can tell everybody how they can best tap into this. And then we do have a system that we will tell you about. Nothing to buy. We're just going to show you a system that Jenny will take you through. And I kind of look at myself as, as, a, as a good instructor. She's a good trainer. So she's going to be really good at teaching you guys stuff that you'll actually be able to go out I'm going to realize things, she's going to help you learn things. That's why we kind of come as a, as a good tandem group here. So we have the S4 group. Our office is in Old Town Scottsdale, one of the branch offices of my home group. We've been down there for a couple of years. Um, and we try to tell people that we do real estate, but whatever you're thinking in your mind is how we do real estate. Wipe that out of your mind. That's not exactly what we do. We, we do things a little bit differently. And that's part of one of our little scripts that we use to get people's attention and go on to tell them about how we do business kind of uniquely. And most of our business comes from business to business relationships, working from our sphere. And we'll get into talking about little superpowers that each of you have. We're going to help you realize maybe what your superpowers are while you're in here today. So you can walk out going like, hey, I've got a, a new idea for how I can go about tapping into my business and tapping into my database that I didn't think of before. <clears throat> so when I say we're not your typical real estate group, yeah, we do typical real estate. We do the regular real estate transactions. The thing that we pride ourselves on is we just go about it doing it differently. And that's what we, we'd love to see more people do business this way than do things where they're actually stalking people like we were talking about in the mastermind, where there's a lot of stalking. There, there's a lot of, um, what was the other word that was used in here besides stalking? Pestering. 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 <laughs> like the word, yeah, pestering. Um, how many of you like getting telemarketing calls? <laughs> I mean, honestly, like nobody, because usually in each group there's like one person that likes getting telemarketing calls. And, it, and it's interesting because I like to find out without picking on the person, I want to find out, well, why do you like getting telemarketing calls? And there's some legitimate reasons. The legitimate reason may be they like uh, a unique opportunity or there may be something that they have to sell that they wouldn't know about if they didn't have taken the call. And that's totally legitimate, which just goes to prove that there is one person usually in the group that wants to get a telemarketing call, but it's that one person. And so what typically we teach in real estate as a whole, not just not here, but in, as a whole in real estate, we teach people to keep going out and looking for those people. Call 100 people because out of 100 people, you might find one that wants to talk to you real estate. And that's the win when you talk to that one person. But what we get concerned about is, well, what about the 99 people that you just pissed off that now don't like real estate agents because now they think that we're just like telemarketers? So we're more concerned about the 99 that we pissed off and not necessarily the one that we got. So as Mark was saying in the mastermind, how can we go about getting people to come to us because they want to do real estate or they want to work with us as opposed to us trying to chase them down? And that's basically what this is about today. So we don't do real estate any differently really than what you do. It's just the way that we go about it is kind of unique. And I'm starting to see more and more discussion about relationships. I'm, I'm hearing this everywhere. I'm hearing it on the radio. I'm hearing it on, you know, I'm seeing it on TV when people are talking about doing business. We're starting to get back to relationship stuff. And we did a little mastermind here a couple weeks ago. We invited some people into our office and just kind of brainstorm on some of this. And one of the gentlemen that was in there, his name's Eric Kelly, I'm sorry, is that right? Yeah, Eric Kelly. He, he made a great point. He said, you know, one of the things that will never be able to be replaced by technology, because we're all worried about all the new technology and stuff that's coming out, but one thing that will no, never be replaced is humanity. And that is so true. If you've got relationships with people and you've got people that know that you care about them, that is never going to be replaced by technology, no matter how swift the, the uh, apps are and the systems that they're selling out there. 
So we're going to talk more about how to put together the relationships, how to deal more with the humanity part of it, and it makes it fun for everybody. It's, we, we want to work with people that want to work with us, vice versa. So we're going to talk about some real life statistics right now. Oh, you know what? I think that that's not actually the right presentation because there's two of them and one of them has a different slide here. The statistics are still accurate, but I want to do the one. The open house gentleman isn't here anymore, but that's where we got that. Okay. Should be this one. Page one. Yeah. So this is the one that I wanted to talk about. Mm -hmm. It's a, a little yeah. different slide and leading to something else. So these are statistics that we didn't, and I'll get out of your way so you can see these too. We didn't make these up. These actually come from a National Association of Realtors survey. And it's something that you don't see a whole lot, how these ratios play out. And it's kind of eye-opening that you've got direct mail, which anymore, not many people are doing direct mail, but yet I still open my mailbox and I still got like four or five flyers from realtors that are in my mailbox every day. And I have one of those cluster boxes in my neighborhood and you know what's right next to the cluster box? A garbage can. They have a, they have a little garbage concrete garbage can right there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> makes it really handy. So you can take the flyers right out of your mail slot and put them right into the garbage can. Or people take it home and they open the mail over the top of their garbage can and most of those real estate flyers go right in there. And what kind of things are on the real estate flyers? When you guys see those, like what kind of stuff do they send out? Just sold or just sold. Or yeah. Just, listed. just sold, ju just listed, um, what the buyers. market values are in the neighborhood. Um, if you want to do a free home search, you can go to this website and you can do a free home search. Anything unique about any of that? Is, that, is there anything there that not any other realtor can possibly put together? So what's the incentive? Why would I look at one piece of collateral as opposed to another piece of collateral that somebody sends me in the mail? No reason whatsoever. And that's why the conversion rate is 2001. So it's almost a waste of everybody's time. And I'm not here to say that the way we do business is the only way to do business. It's a way of doing business, but it's also a much less expensive way of doing business. Because when you're printing up the postcards and then you've got to address them and take the time to do that, or get the title company to do it, and then you've got to pay for all the postage and the time that goes into it, hoping that maybe you're going to get one response out of 2,000, is that worth your time? Is that your, your highest and best use of your time? Probably not. Internet leads. Now, this one can be controversial because a lot of people look at that and they go like, well, I don't agree because I have internet leads and, and I have a ratio that's much better than that. And that's true, you can. The question would be, well, okay, but what, how much are you paying? Because if you pay more, you'll probably have a better ratio, but you got to pay to play. So uh, we're going to talk more about how Zillow and Realtor.com and Trulia and some of those all work. But nevertheless, internet leads, unless you're spending a boatload of money, has got a very, very crazy conversion <laughs> ratio. Cold calling, which is usually cold calling for uh, expired listings, canceled listings for sale by owners, those kind of things. There's a lot of scripts or some real estate companies that that's primarily what they teach their agents to do. And then there are people that will sell you lists of the people that have recently canceled or have recently listed their house for sale by owner. Um, there's uh, what Red, Red X that will sell you lists of phone numbers and stuff to call people. And then somebody else will sell you a dialing system because you want to be very efficient when you're calling. You want to have one person being dialed while you're speaking to somebody else. So as soon as you hang up, you have somebody else on the line right away, right? And then somebody else wants to sell you the, the equipment, the headset, because you gotta be able to have it attached, you gotta be able to talk right and be really efficient, it's gotta be clear. So it's like there's this whole business behind doing the, the cold calling where people are gonna try to sell you stuff just for cold calling purposes. Once again, it's money that you really don't need to be spending. Door knocking can be very effective because it's kind of a one-on-one -on -one contact when you're talking to people, but who wants to talk to a stranger at their front door? And nobody really wants to jump into a relationship with you when you show up at their front door. And quite frankly, for us guys, it's not such a good thing for us to go around knocking on people's doors. They don't want to open the doors for guys anymore. And there are some of the, the agents that I, I, I know that are very successful at this, but they're also the female type that don't look as intimidating as a guy and they'll get the door open for them where most of us in this room, it looks like are, are male. Um, we don't really stand a chance with this door knocking. Now all of a sudden it starts to change when you get to friends. Look at the ratios, it gets cut in half. When you get to friends, and I think if I go here, you see this is where it changes. So if we throw that out up on top, 
And we talked about this down on the bottom where we've got friends, sign calls, open houses, office walk-ins, past clients and referrals. What's different about this group than this group? Is there anything substantially different? Conversion ratio. Well, the conversion ratio, okay, but the, we, wow. know, we know these people. We know, or at least they have an interest in real estate. We know these people. These people are calling us. These people are walking into a place where we are. These people are walking into a place we are. These people know us. We've worked with them before. And these people are being being referred. Hmm? The comfort level. The comfort level, yeah. There's, so. there's potential for relationships here. There's not really a potential for relationship up here at the very beginning. You may develop it up over time, but right off the bat, there is no relationship with direct mail, internet, cold calling, or door knocking. Unless you're door knocking on your neighbor, but then I would say you'd want to probably put it down here and probably more of one of the friend categories. So people, again, dispute some of these and say my ratios are different. They could be, they could be different. This is again from NAR, so this takes over the entire country looking at these ratios. But I would propose that these are fairly accurate for the way that we work. But yet, the other thing that's different about these is most of this right here, there's nothing to sell you. You got nothing to buy. Where if you look at these up here, there's something that somebody could be selling you. They, they're selling you flyers, they're selling you printers, they're selling you graphic design, they're selling you the, the system, the internet leads. There's actually motivation for them to sell you this, and salesmen are good. They want to call you and say, hey, if you want to do business, you got to spend money. Here's where I can sell you something. And then everybody ends up making money except the realtors. You ever had a year where it looks like you paid out more to try to get leads than what you brought in with actual closings? I think we've, we've all been there. But this down here doesn't really cost you anything if you know how to work it right. So this is where we're going to be focusing in the next hour or so is on this part right here. So this is the way that I see internet leads. I see internet leads as, or any of these other type of cold calling systems, the top part, as sitting there waiting for an opportunity to come, to come find you. And you know that there's clients in there, there's definitely a client below, but you don't have any direct contact with the client until you get that lead that comes in. And a lead doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna turn into business. What's the difference between a lead and a referral? Let's talk about a lead first. What is a lead? Give me a, kind of a rough definition of a lead. Usually your website, or I'm sorry, website. Uh, well, okay, just an example of Someone a lead. Someone's example or, or looking at houses, basically. Okay, it's a, it's, it's a unknown person. We get wind yeah. of somebody, somebody that you don't necessarily know. Right. Right. Do you know. Do you know for sure that the name that they put in the on the lead is their actual name? No. Do you know Bob if it's their real phone number? No. What was it? Bob at Bob. Bob at Bob.com or yeah. Mickey Mouse at Disneyland.com. <laughs> yeah, how about phone number? Do you know you're getting the correct phone number? So you really don't know the quality of the lead. And in some cases, like Zillow, they're not necessarily leads. They call it something else. What do they call them? You're buying impressions. You're buying impressions in order to maybe get a lead, but you're buying an impression. Now, what's an impression? Somebody, Somebody gets a glimpse. Somebody gets an opportunity to maybe call you if they want, but they could call two other agents that are on the same page. So it's really like sitting there fishing and you don't even know if you're gonna be able to get anything. And this is the way that most places are set up. Some, some like, uh, I'll say to Zillow, you, you got the four realtors sitting here fishing and they've, they've sold you a bill of goods and they're selling you these leads that really don't go anywhere. There actually are clients out there, but you're not anywhere close to the clients. Looks like the, the realtor's money here is really a problem because everything's become disconnected. And then you got these tech sales guys that are floating around. Everybody's trying to call you and sell you a different website, a different system. I probably get calls maybe three times a week from somebody that has a new and improved mousetrap that they're wanting to sell me because this is guaranteed of, of getting leads. And I even have people that I know really well that know I'm in real estate that have been calling me lately saying, hey, I'm now working for a company that does real estate leads. I know you because I think they got a relationship. I want to sell you the, the real estate leads. And I have to go through and explain to them that I don't do business that way because I just don't see it as being the highest and best use of my time. Zillow um, is kind of a necessary evil. I think everybody needs to have a Zillow account to a point because if you have listings, you want them to be able to appear so the general public can go in and search and be able to see your listing. But what Zillow wants is in order for you to be 
a primary agent, they want you to buy a zip code. They want you to buy a portion of it. So this is kind of like the supplies that they're selling you here. They're saying like, well, they're gonna give you support. They're gonna give you uh, four tenths of a millionth or whatever of a, of a zip code down here. They're gonna give you guaranteed impressions, which I've always struggled with that one again, impressions. Like, you're gonna give me impressions. That just means that my name and number is gonna appear someplace for a brief period of time and make an impression on the client. But they're not necessarily gonna call me. They're gonna, it's kind of a popularity contest. They're gonna call maybe the person with the nicest picture on the page, the person with the most reviews, the person with the highest number of sales. So if you're doing a lot of work and you're putting in a whole lot of reviews and get your clients to review you and go on there, you got a better chance. But other than that, you're just like any, anybody else. And then they'll give you mobile apps and all that, but it doesn't really do a whole lot for you. And then how many of you have noticed that most of the time when they go to sell you a zip code, it's nothing that you would ever want in a million years anyway. And this is usually what happens. And I'm not saying this is a conspiracy, but it's awfully suspicious. I'll say, I want, Zip code 85251, like Old Town Scottsdale. And they say, oh, 85251 isn't available, but we've got Buckeye, 85303 or whatever, we'll give you Buckeye. And you're like, well, I don't really want Buckeye. Well, nobody else has got Buckeye. We give you a great special on Buckeye. They sell you on Buckeye. You buy the Buckeye zip code, and then what happens the following week? They call you and say, hey, 85251 is available. Do you want to buy a piece of 85251? Well, that's what you want in the first place. So you say, okay, well, I'll buy that. Well, now you've bought, bought two. So it always seems to become available after you've been through this, and now you just end up spending more money. And then if you don't spend more money, then what happens? You don't, or you don't get as much business out of it, and that's where this kind of comes in. They say, oh, you're not catching any fish with the kit? Well, you need to buy a deluxe kit. You're only, you're only getting like four millionths of an impression, only four millionths of a zip code, you need to buy a quarter of a zip code or a half a zip code or a whole zip code. That's what you need to do. You just, you just need to spend more money. You need the deluxe kit. And with the deluxe kit, you're going to get all this, but then they're going to work out a, a pricing deal with you, right? So now they're taking you to buy more and more. And then eventually, you don't catch any more fish. And they say, oh, well, if you want to catch a lot of fish, then you got to buy the whole zip code. Then you, you basically need the whole get up to be able to buy everything. And the next thing you know, once again, you're spending all this money, but you're not getting anything in return. Nothing really changes a whole lot, and you start to cycle all over again. You stop doing internet leads and say, never mind, I'm not going to do this. And then the next year you go, it's a necessary evil, and then it's just this cycle that we go, we go through. And then everybody keeps putting this together. I'm picking on Zillow, but there are so many of these that are selling these impressions and internet leads. And so we want to, again, tell you how you can do this without having to buy all this kind of stuff. So cold calling, door knocking, slide dial scripts, robo calling, farming, these are all things that are painful for our clients. Um, there was a group, I don't even know if they're still in Prescott, maybe I shouldn't have even said Prescott just now, but they did come from Prescott. And I remember one of the people said one time, we got this great program that we're teaching, it's called 100 Days of Pain. Have you heard of the 100 Days oh, yeah. of Pain? Are you guys still using 100 Days we of Pain? We don't do it. Oh, good. We don't, do don't do that. Yeah, we don't do it. Who's the pain for? That's what I always wondered. Like, pain for who? Is it pain for us or is it pain for the client? Is it pain for, for both of this? Like, who's going to be in pain? And why do we have a program that even has the word pain in it? That just seems awfully suspicious to me. Because if it's painful for you, then it's going to be painful for the client, too. So we're, we want things that are pleasant for the client. We're trying to be a, a friend of theirs, somebody for them. They want, us, they want them to come to us, not run from us. So we don't want to be doing any of these kind of things. Like this slide dial now, I even heard recently that there's a new way. Does everybody know what slide dial is? Mm -hmm. Heard of slide dial? Some, yes, some yeses, some noes? Mostly yeses? Okay, there, there's at least a couple of noes. Slide dial is a program where you can go in and you can record a message like on your phone. And then you can input a list of phone numbers, or maybe people you know, people in the database, maybe people you don't know, maybe people from a list that you bought from somebody that sold you this list. And Slide Dial will automatically dump voicemails into their voicemail that come from you, that sound supposed to sound like a legitimate voicemail. And people always wonder, like, wow, how did how did I miss the voicemail? My phone never even rang. You ever get that? My phone never rang, and suddenly I got a voicemail. Oh, and it's a telemarketer. You were a victim of slide dial. They dump stuff in there. Usually they're very poor recordings. It's, it's all about, hey, call me back if you want to get more information on this opportunity. 
but it's nothing that really has any substance to it. And if anything, it comes across like stalking. And then what usually happens is people call you back and say, hey, Brandon, I got this voicemail from you and my phone never even rang. And now you're gonna end up having a conversation with them anyways. So it's like, it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And then now they're doing the same thing with, with text messaging. How many of you got text messages during the, the, uh, the last uh, midterm elections? Anybody get text messages from candidates and all that? Like to the point where you didn't want to look at your phone anymore because the text message blew up for you? Same kind of thing. Okay, well, how did you feel as a consumer getting these from, from the, I mean, I'm so sick of Martha McSally and, and uh, help me with the other one. But anyways, yeah, I just like, I just, I just don't want anybody. Just get rid of everybody because I'm sick and tired of being pestered by these people. And unfortunately, that's what people start thinking about us as real estate people too because we start fitting into that category. We're just pestering them, we're just stalking them. Robocalls are what I described, where you got the headset, you got the system that you paid for from somebody, and the system goes in and it, it dials these, and you know when you're getting them because you get one of these funny looking phone numbers that shows up on your phone, and when you answer it, there's nobody there, and then it takes a second for it to click in, and my strategy is if somebody doesn't say hello back to me like right away, then boom, I, just, I dump the call because I know it's a robo call. It's a, it's a computer that's calling me and as soon as it connects me, then I'm on the phone and now it tries to go get the salesman to connect on there with me. And I already know that that's the, that's the gig. So if somebody is selling you these robo systems to your real estate, most people are just hanging up. And now a lot of the telemarketers are going, what, what are we gonna do? Because we're, we're starting to run into problems with people actually answering their phones. I don't answer my phone anymore if I don't know the number that's calling in. I just think if, if there's it's important and it's a client, somebody wants to speak to me, then they're gonna leave me a message. Then I'll listen to the message and if I want, I'll call them back. So that's my way of kind of outsmarting them, but a lot of other people are doing the same kind of thing. Farming, um, and there was a gentleman that was in the last class and he said he works strictly off referral through farming. And I wanted to ask him like, well, how does that work? Because Farming is one way of doing business, and referral is another way of doing business. Oh, that probably was me. It was that you? In the okay. mastermind. Yeah, how does that and work? The reason why is I used to, in this subdivision, there's uh -huh. like 1,400 homes. I used to sell new homes there, and I sold a lot of the new homes. So I take about 300 in this one area that I farm, and everybody there refers me to other people if they have buyers wanting to come in or gotcha. someone's going to sell their house. So I kind of farm it, but I, I, so I get so many referrals from that section that I will farm it, like I'll, I'll do some door to door, and they'll open the door for me because they recognize me, and I'll pass out, like we just passed out 40 pies, which isn't a lot, this is the first year we did it. We, uh -huh. we took 40 pies, like pumpkin pies. Wow, that's a lot. That's I know, a lot and we pass them out. But yeah. then we got invited to the fucking sweater parties in the community, and everybody said, oh, there's, you're the best realtors. We tell everybody, so we, we're trying something a little bit new, like more relationship connecting, uh -huh. but, so I do farm it, but I get referrals from there too. Yeah. So they're really, Okay, so now, I, now this makes sense to me. Because okay. When I usually think of farming, I think of people that don't know you and you're dropping oh, no. off a flyer or throwing something with no, a rock in the me. envelope up towards they the front door me. kind of thing. They actually know you. Oh, yeah. So it's a different level of farming and yeah. now you're working with people that you've already had oh, yeah. some level of relationship with. Good, okay. Because true farming is when people say, I want to take this subdivision and I'm going to have the title company pull up all the addresses in that subdivision and I'm going to come up with all these flyers and we're just going to blanket, send them out to everybody's mailbox or drop them all on the front door, have them stick them in the, in the sliding glass door or the screen door or whatever. And that's a whole different level than what you're discussing. Yeah. But I will tell you, we did all the wrong things like what you're saying were wrong. We did all that. Like, this is my son's realtor now, but when they were little. That's your they, son? Yeah. I have three that were congratulations to both of you that were working real estate. But uh -huh. my my kid, other one got bit by a dog. We do, we passed out stuff. We sent twenty five hundred cards and maybe got one phone call. We learned our lesson about throwing money away. We all we all we learned our lesson more, about throwing but, money away, and yeah. that's why we're hoping that yeah. we can do this and maybe yeah. save some people some money that haven't thrown our money yeah. away yet. But we've all been through that. We've all done that. Okay, so. I like this quote, it says, when you quit chasing the wrong clients, you give the right clients a chance to catch you. So let's just quit chasing people. Let's quit stalking them, let's quit pestering them, let's quit chasing them. And I'm just throwing this out as a suggestion. I'm not saying everybody has to do this, but hopefully by the time you leave, you're gonna go, hey, there's other ways of doing business where we don't have to buy something and we don't have to pester the crap out of people and make them run from us all the time. And so we're gonna talk about working off referrals. 
Now there's a bunch of different ways to work off referrals. Typically people are thinking a referral is somebody calls you and says, hey, I've got somebody that wants to sell a house. Here's the name, here's the phone number, you know, give them a call back. That's true, that, that's kind of how a referral is. But the way that it comes about, the process that happens on the front end before you actually get that phone call is what we're really gonna focus on. How do you go about getting, getting a referral? And this is what a typical network looks like. This is like how your database is typically set up. This is how a network is. You're here in the center with all these people around you that you're hoping to be able to influence so that they're gonna be able to send you business or you're gonna be able to do business with them directly. And you see how some of them are connected, like this person is only gonna be able to refer this person because you don't know this person directly. So this person here would say, I want you to meet my neighbor. My neighbor needs to sell the house but you have to have a relationship with this person to start off with. So in this scenario right here, there's like 15 different connections if you were working off referrals with this system. But what we're gonna talk about is doing this. This is a whole lot different. Now we're gonna talk about a way that you can be working with people with different networks, different systems. And this is where we're gonna talk about superpowers and people that you know and different areas that maybe you have a passion for different backgrounds that you have. Um, we tell all of our agents that they have a superpower. They have a particular area that they would be very, very good at working in because they either have a knowledge of it, they have people within it already that they know and know them and trust them. It's a matter of finding it. And even people that have just moved here from other places can still do this. A lot of people think, oh, I just got here, I don't know anybody. That's okay, you're gonna, you're gonna know people. We can tell you where to go and you may have a passion for doing something. Uh, and I'll give you some examples as we go through this so you can kind of put it into perspective. So if you know somebody that's in a, it's a, in a influential position that has a lot of other people that they can influence, then you want to be able to talk to this person and now you've got one connection that can connect you with 15 other people. And then you know somebody else that connect you with their people. And this is a much more efficient way of doing a referral system than just with the immediate people within your sphere. Too often we think about just our database. That's true, database may be one of you. Let's say this one's your database, that's great. But you still need to have these. You need to have more because everything we know is a numbers game. You're not gonna necessarily get something from your sphere all the time. You might get something from one of these others. So hey what's a big indication that that's the red guy I'm talking to right now? I'm mm -hmm. not talking to a blue guy. So how, how do you, do you know, know if it's a red guy? Yeah. First of all, we're gonna start kind of back at the beginning and talk about who the red guys are. Yep, yes ma'am. Do you have a certain technique of teaching your clients to refer you? I mean, I've got a lot of clients that have been happy with me, they've come to me when they have their own personal needs, and yet when I, you know, have coffee with them, it's just like, oh yeah, I said uh, so-and-so to your family member. Oh, great. How long yep. ago was that? Months ago. I bet you Jenny's going to talk about that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good. All right. I'll that's, wait that's, for what, it. that's one of the things. Yeah, I hate. And, and there are some scripts in this. And when I when I say scripts, it's not. Uh, hey, my name is Kevin Crane. I'm a real estate agent. Do you know anybody that wants to buy, sell, or invest in real estate that I can call today? That's a script. That's right out of Keller Williams' old system. Okay. It's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about scripts. Like when somebody says something like that, then how do you respond to something like that? And what I say when people say, oh, I just gave your number out to some friends of mine that are thinking about buying a house. I say, fantastic. There's probably a good chance that they're gonna call me and we'll be able to work together and I'll be able to help them. But if I can get their information, I guarantee you there's a 100% chance we're gonna talk because I'm gonna call them right away and be proactive. And the reason I want to do that is there's no relationship there yet. Just because somebody gave my phone number or my business card to somebody doesn't mean that they know me. All that may have done is just trigger their memory to remember that, oh, wait a minute, I don't even call Kevin Craig. My, my neighbor next door is a real estate agent. I've, I've seen him with a placard on his car. I'll just go talk to him. Relationship trumps all else. So if you don't have a relationship and somebody says they gave out your number, first thing you need to do is get that number. We talked about open houses earlier. We'll probably talk about that a little bit at some point in this. But when people leave, handing them your business card or handing them a flyer with your number on it is, is nothing because there's no relationship. You've got to get their information. And there is a script that you can use to be able to get information and different strategies, but you have to do it because you have something they want. They want to give you their information because you're going to give them something in return that they're asking for. 
and we can talk you through how to do some of that. Yes, Brent. Now, I was just going to ask if there's a distinct difference between uh, uh, sending, uh, having them contact their reference and referring them directly to you, like say, okay, great, pull out your phone, I'm going to send you a text message, you can just go ahead and forward it to them, and that'll have your information in it. Is that less impactful than, hey, give me their direct line, I'm going to make sure that I touch base with them? I want to have their information. I mean, number, number one, get their information. Number two is get the next best thing you can. Right. And if it's a matter of sending them your stuff on a text or whatever, that's fine. But there's still no relationship there. I just think so, that it builds their, so if my sister sends me the info, I'm going to be a lot more inclined to hit re re mm -hmm. reply on that than if I just get a random number or wait for a message and then kind of, so that's what I'm Absolutely. Trying to Absolutely, and we can talk about scripts and stuff and how you can actually capture these people without sounding like you're stalking them, chasing them. Somebody walks in an open house and you say, hey, I got a, a log here, the seller wants me to have this completed so they know everybody that came into the open house. BS, most people don't believe that for a minute. The seller doesn't really care about who all came into the open house. They want to know how many, the numbers, but they don't want to listen to the people. That's for the agent, and the people coming in know that. And you say, here, I, I, if you go ahead and put uh, sign into my open house, then I can go ahead and I can put you into my database. No, I don't want you sending me crap out of your database. I'm not going to get it. But if you've got something that I want, like if you've got a list of all the, like Jenny said, know the area, and you have a list of just a, maybe a, a, only the list off the MLS of all the properties that are for sale in the area, and you, and you say, well, if this one doesn't work because you need a fourth bedroom, I can see that on my list here there's one, two, three, four, five. There's five other four-bedroom homes that are available in the same neighborhood. Most of the time people say, well, can I get a copy of that? Oh, wow, this is the only one I've got. I just brought it for the open house, but I'd be happy to email it to you. You want me to email it to you? Sure, let me get your email address. And you know, it's coming from my MLS, so sometimes that goes into a spam folder. Why don't you just give me your, your cell number, and I'll just text you and let you know that I sent it, and that way you know to go and look for it, and it will be there. And if you've got questions on those, then you can call me back, and I can take you out and show you those four bedrooms. And now, I've provided them with something that they want, but they just willingly gave me their information in return. And I didn't have to go through this phony blog thing. We have the same thing for when people walk into our office and they want information. There's actually a process for this so that you're, give, you're, you're being a, a provider of information of things that they want instead of just trying to force something on them or, or force them to give you their information. So let, let's keep talking through this because I'm going I'm to talk and Jenny will have no time and that would be bad because hers is the most important stuff. So these people right here are key people in areas that you have some familiarity with, people that you may know. Let's use, for example, um, I'm going to pick on, uh, on Andrea Garcia from our, our team. Andrea, I met through an association that I joined because I was wanting to do work with the elderly, with seniors. In our area here, the Metro Phoenix area, there's over 100,000 seniors that are over the age of 80 years old that all within the next 10 years are gonna be going into assisted living, they're gonna be moving back in with family, or they may unfortunately pass away. It's a fact of life, and we happen to have more seniors here than almost any place else in the country except maybe Florida. So we decided that we wanted to be able to work with influential senior people. How do I find these people with seniors? So we went and started going to networking groups that involved different agencies that worked with seniors so I could find out who some of the who's who people are, the people that I needed to know. And I ended up meeting a lady that worked for an in-home care company called Cypress In-Home Care. So when people are not mobile, they, they can't be going to the doctor and going to the store and going places, there are different groups that will come in and bring them food. The doctors will come into them and people coordinate all that. And Cypress was one of that. I met Andrea. And she learned what we were trying to do with real estate and be able to help the family members and when they had a property that they no longer needed and all the stuff that's in it, we could liquidate it for them. She liked the idea that we were able to provide that for some of her clients, but I didn't know talking to her that she secretly had an interest in real estate. She really liked to be doing real estate, but then she came to me and she said, I, you know, I've always wanted to have my real estate license, but at the same time, I really just want to serve the senior living industry over here because this is the industry I know. These are the people that I've worked with. These, these are my peeps. Is there a way that I could do real estate and still work with these people? Absolutely there is. So what Andrea does, she knows all these people in assisted living situations. She knows in-home care people. She knows um, group home people. She knows people that run centers. She knows placement agencies. She knows hospice people. 
So she connects with each of them, and each of them then have seniors and adult children that all are in need of her services. So when she connects with somebody like a um, in-home care company, and the in-home care company knows that they have a senior down here that's gonna move back in with family and needs to liquidate their house, they call Andrea. So she has created this, she still has her database, and she keeps adding these people to her database, but she goes out and works with the people she knows. So she spends her time in front of the folks that she already has relationships with and sitting down saying, this is what services that I can offer to you. This is what I can do for your clients. It doesn't cost them anything. I only get compensated when I sell a property through a standard commission. And we can be a one-stop shop full resource because if they have to liquidate the property, we can bring in an estate sale company, we can do junk removal. I mean, we've all got access to all those, all those kind of people. We got movers, we got packers, we got everything. So why can't we offer that to all these different people? Well, then I also have people like Sandra Nixon who works with financial advisors because he used to sell wholesale products to financial advisors. He would sell them like mutual funds and all that that then they sold to their clients. So he wanted to get into real estate, but he wanted to know, is there a way I could be in real estate that I can still work with all those people that I used to service in the financial world? Yes, you can, because a financial advisor also has all these people that they're managing money for. What happens if one of these people needs to sell a property or wants to buy an investment property? or better yet, has a commercial property that's looking at buying or selling. Well, then that financial advisor can contact Sandin and say, I've got this client that's able to do this. Who looks good? This guy looks good, because he's able to connect Sandin. Sandin gets business, but it's all warm relationship and warm, warm referral. And I could go by almost person by person that works with us, with Jenny and I, and talk about what their superpower is, what their passion is, where they want to work. We have some that just want to work in the luxury uh, world. They just want to work there. That's fine. Then how do we get in with luxury? How do you fit in with those folks? You've got to go to the Paradise Valley Tour. You've got to be aware of what's out there. You've got to be able to market yourself correctly. But there's still people within that, that world that work that way. Um, kind of an extreme example I guess we've got of one of these is uh, Alexis, who um, I actually met after teaching one of the classes here. She came up to me afterwards. It was a similar class to this. And she said, I'm a new agent, I just got started, um, and I have this passion, I would really like to be able to work with major league ball players, because my husband is a major league ball player, and when they, we, we get traded and we get moved around the country, my husband goes off and plays ball, and I get stuck doing everything. And I have to do all the move, I have to do all the pack, I have to take care of everything, get rid of the house, and a lot of times, they don't know anybody because they've only been there a short time, they're there for a season and they get traded again. Is there a way that I could work with your group and you could teach me how to be able to work with major league ball players and their wives? So now that's what she does. She connects with major league ball player agents. She works with the major league baseball financial advisors. And then when they have ball players that need to do a real estate transaction or invest in something, they contact Alexis. So right about now, each of you should be thinking, hey, I got either a passion, I got a hobby, I got something I'm familiar with because of a past career, but you probably have somebody that you know in one of these that you could turn into your superpower quite easily if you did the right steps and you said the right things and you kind of knew some of the dialogue to be able to explain to them how you can benefit them. That, that kind of makes sense? So that's sort of where all this is going because in your phones right now, I guarantee you guys have a gold mine in your phones. Your database is in there. It's just a matter of, well, who do you call? And if you call them, what do you say? And if you're able to get in front of them, then what do you, what do, you do? What do you give them? How do you, how do you talk to them? How do you provide something of value? And that's what Jenny's gonna start going through here in a second. So turn it over to Jenny, and she's gonna now talk about what makes you guys special that's gonna help you figure out maybe what your superpower actually is. You ready? Yeah, so really, it's how do you systemize and so if you want to write down a book, the book that we've chosen to systemize our business off of is called Ninja Selling. And um, N I N J A. Ninja. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so it's a great book. But I wanted to ask who recognizes this guy? Does everybody in the room know who Tony Robbins is? He was in town a couple weeks ago. And I want to share a story with you that he told, not, not at the seminar, but I heard it on a podcast that really hit home with me, and, and I know it will with you all too, and some of you might have heard it. 
but he was coaching a real estate agent who was a friend of his and um, about how to get business. And this gentleman lived in a luxury community. And at the time, the garbage people were on strike. And so um, it was getting a little tense in the neighborhood because the garbage was piling up and people were getting really upset. And Tony said to his friend, he said, look, what makes you so special? Why, why should somebody hire you? All the realtors do the same thing. They take pretty pictures and they put it on the MLS and they hold it open and they do the tours. And I mean, in reality, you guys, we all do the same thing. Some people do it better than others, but you can take a hundred agents and they'll all equally do the same thing equally well. So what makes you special? So Tony, Tony suggested to this gentleman that he hire a private garbage truck company to come in while the strike was going on and take care of the garbage. And his friend didn't have a ton of money, but Tony said, just trust me, just hire the company, and oh, by the way, don't tell anyone you did it. And again, his friend was like, are you kidding me? So I'm just gonna pay for this, and I'm gonna do this, and I'm gonna tell anybody? And he said, yes, trust me, don't say a word, just do it. And pretty soon, the neighborhood started looking better and um, and the neighborhood was talking and they were, they were thinking the strike was over, but then they found out it wasn't. But who's, who's, what's going on? Who's picking up the garbage and who's paying for this? Well, people talk, right? And they all figured it out. And so he started, this agent started getting calls from the neighbors saying, hey, we heard that you're doing this. How can we help? Can we pitch in? You know, can we give you money? And the guy was like, no, no, you know, I you know, I care about our neighborhood. I care about our community. I sell homes in this community. I live in this community and it's on me. I, I'm taking care of this. And so long story short, he ended up getting a ton of business for this $4,000 that he invested in taking care of his community. And so that's what made him special, right? And I think about your farm and I live in a neighborhood where the neighbors are really close and there's this one special family that um, they organize Christmas caroling. We got this like life-size poster on our doorstep the other day and it was of a person and the challenge was for every family to just add some kind of decor to the person and pass it on wow. and then return to the badgets by this date. And I'm like, oh my God, if this guy sold real estate, he'd be rich and why am I not doing this? Because I throw like I throw the jump tent parties and I do like some things, but it's almost more personal. It's just really special what they're doing. And you think about, you know, how how can you show people if you live in a community that you're the guy that cares about the community, right? You're the guy or gal that goes a step above that. And so is there anybody that can think, and I want this to be interactive, of something that makes you special? Not just where you live, but maybe you have something inside of you that's special. Anything. We need to like get ideas from each other. Well, I am a retired social worker. So in the community that I farm in, I do help a lot. We, I helped this one older couple who said, we don't, we want to have a garage sale, but we don't know what to do. So me and him went and did it. We priced everything. Now, a couple months later, they're going to assisted living and we just got their listing, which is our little garage. So That's we do exactly that because it's part of, I am wired to be a social worker. I did it for 20 years and I still feel like I want to go help those people who don't have family or anybody. Yeah. And do, does your neighborhood have a social media page, like a Facebook page? We have, we yeah, created yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. and so that's what Andrea, I want to do. Andrea gave me a referral of a realtor down here who passed away, but she had a house in Prescott, and I sold that house and got some other deals out of it too. So we know Andrea. Awesome. And so you guys are doing so yeah. many things right. If you wanted to get busier, you just got to think of more ways right. to connect. John Maxwell talks about uh, everybody communicates, but few connect. And so connection is about you no longer are thinking about yourself, you're thinking about the other person and so often when we meet with people we're thinking about oh are they how can I weave in real estate into this conversation or you know how can I get re more referrals from this person and that kind of thing and we're not really connecting at the heart right and so um, 
just that little Christmas idea, we could still do it. If there's still time. It was literally just a life size poster board and they put people's name on it and then and then what it was is there was like eight people before me that had decorated it and then I had to add the next neighbor's name and then I put it on their doorstep. Yeah. And it was so it was so cool. And then you could post the finished yeah. product on kids' social media. It's idea. just really like the, those little extra things and um, every once in a while of course there's even to help, like so and so needs help, can anybody help me help them and you know, all of those great ideas. But does anybody else have one to add before we move on? I do a food food drive and I do a clothing drive once a year. Once a year. I, I don't follow up very well with the people that my 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 objective is to follow up with people that participate in that mm -hmm. and uh, make a personal contact with them. What yeah. stops you from following up? Way late on something else. You know, that's the connecting later. part, though, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I know that's, that makes the difference. I have a yeah. farm, very strong farm area, and mm -hmm. that will make a difference. Yeah, yeah. We'll if it's not you, help. maybe somebody else could call for you and oh, say, yeah. you know, anything just to, to really connect, make a difference. No, I like story. pushing the lock up the mountain. <laughs> uh, well, at least you're aware. That's the I first know. step, right? Yeah. First step is awareness. Yeah. So, my food small. So we have a dog-friendly condo fringe area, right? So there's these, these neighbors, and they just kind of let their dogs just leave their their uh, waste kind of like all over. So I, a neighbor pulled me aside one morning, and she was saying she was going through you know, chemo, and she had this and that going on. Her window was just polluted with all this stuff. And uh, it turns out I went to school with her daughter, and so that's how we connected. I make it a point if I ever see anything, I just take it. Why not? You know, it's that's right there, it's grab a bag, it's not a big deal, it takes one minute. Mm -hmm. And now there's layers here and there, and, and it, we're connected with the uh, neighbors of the next, and it just kind of brought us all together. And go figure, now all my clothes have been left by her daughter, and then I'm always just kind of in the, in the connection loop with them, I guess. And then obviously, if you ever need anything, come over, you need some sugar, or do you, it, yeah. I mean, it just really built that. And that's what we're all desire, right, is connection. And Joey, I wanted to throw you a tip too, because I was the PD tour director at one point in time. There's 300 agents at each meeting. Can you believe that? It doesn't seem like that, but there's over 300 and their um, membership is almost 1,000. But when I had, I had a three million, $4 million listing as well, and it is really, really, really easy to break into luxury once you sell one house. And so one of my goals this year is to create 20 new um, business, like people, business owner relationships and um, start giving them referrals. So right now, if you were to take the PD tour, the, um, what is it, the, you know, the booklet you get when you go on tour, it has all of the businesses that sponsor that membership and call and set up copies with all of those business owners and, and see, um, tell them you're putting together a vendor list for your clients and the people that come in maybe and look at your your house. And it's a great way. My first luxury deal came from a title rep. And then my second one came from a hairstylist. And so you just never know, but these business owners, they're the best, it's, it's like Kevin Sly, right? They're the best people who are gonna refer you because they, they want your referrals you want their referrals and they get it, right? They get it. And our past clients don't get it. They don't, they're not necessarily all business owners. Some of them are maybe nurses or school teachers and they don't, they don't even think about what a referral really means to you and how it can impact your life. So you, you gotta let them know like what a referral really means to your livelihood, right? Okay, next slide. And I have another book for you guys. There's another book, I just heard a podcast, it's called Friend of a Friend. David Berkus, I believe, is the author. He has a TED Talk, he's um, a Harvard contributor, and um, so the, it's called like, you're six degrees away from anyone in the world, right? Like six, six people away from anyone in the world. So he talks about that, and he talks about how we're always looking to add a network, like to find a new network, but you're already in one. Most of you already have a network of people. You're just not necessarily going deep enough. You're staying on the, like a lot of times what we realtors do 
is we stay on the surface, kind of like we do the food drives, we do the clothes drives, but we don't go deeper. And so you probably have a network, but like you go over here trying to find, yeah, Brittany. Well, I just gotta let it out. Um, so that situation <laughs> I was talking about, I rem and just how you touched on, I'm over here searching, you know, Facebook and Instagram or whatever, but I, now a light bulb went off. Oh, my daughter's been trying to get in this community, blah, 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 and now we're gonna sell ours. I'm totally gonna give her a flyer. I'm gonna hook up with her daughter and say, this is the freaking, the, the deal oh, oh, he's deal right. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I don't think so, but I'm the link up and uh, kind of do work that referral more so than the other one. That's the perfect deal. Yeah, and, and remember to connect, not communicate, because communication is when you're thinking of you. Connect. Um, so he says, what if the best way to grow your network isn't by introducing yourself to strangers at cocktail parties, handing out business cards, or signing up for the latest online tool, but by developing a better understanding of the existing network you're already in. And so his thing is, um, he does utilize social media. You have a network on that social media, right? Um, so. So you're going to need to create some lists and, you know, whether you have friends and family lists, past client lists, client lists, but create those or business owner lists. The LinkedIn is a great place to go to get coffees with business owners and um, go deeper, go deeper. And he said, do not reach out through social media, send an email or a phone call or a text and say, hey, I noticed you had a baby, congratulations, I've been thinking about you, and I just wanted you to know, no need to respond. And that's his big tagline, because we get, we get so much communication thrown at us, you guys know us as realtors, but the general public <coughs> as well. Don't give them that, don't give them something else to do. Don't give them the responsibility of having to have someone else to call back, someone else to email back or text back. Just say, hey, no need to respond. Because guess what they'll do? They'll respond. All right, so we, this is this our system, the Ninja Selling System. Larry Kindle wrote this book. It's a phenomenal book. You can get it on Amazon. But if you want to work by referral, he can tell you exactly what you need to do every day to be successful. So I'm just gonna run through these. I wanted, I wanted you guys, we're like three minutes away from the end of class. So I'm gonna. No. Yes. Oh, 1.45 no, or 2.45. No, three o'clock. Oh, yeah. phew. Oh, okay. I can do this, <laughs> I can do this. All right, so gratitude. Um, I'm, I'm a foster mom, so a fellow social worker, I'm not a social worker, but I'm a foster mom and adoptive mom. And, um, so I learn a lot about the brain with what I do. And our brain, guys, is trained to see problems. We are, and in real estate, we always have problems, right? So it's super easy to get like, to get like a little bit of a, a negative attitude or, or just a little bit of a loss of energy. And so by starting your day with, whether it's a reading or um, like, I, I like to read the Bible, but some people like to read like positive quotes or whatever, but to wake up when it's quiet and just like put good stuff in your brain, it actually changes the chemicals in your brain. There's a reason, and that's why this book is so great. He explains the science behind why. There's so many books about you need to go and start your day this way, but they don't explain why. And there is an actual science that your brain releases like either cortisol or dopamine, depending on what you're thinking about. And again, we tend to think about all the problems instead of what's good. And so he explains the science behind why waking up and feeling grateful and being grateful actually changes the brain chemistry. And so the Ninja Nine is, the first step is wake up and read and, and grateful for something. I like to end my day that way too. But, um, show up. Companies rarely promote people in their leadership roles who haven't been consistently seen and measured. It is a familiarity thing and it's a trust thing. We're not saying that people who get promoted are stars during every crucible moment at the office, but at least they're present and accounted for. And their presence says, work is my top priority. I am committed to this company. I want to lead and I can. And this is, this is from a corporate website. This is from Forbes. 
This isn't a real estate thing, right? And so I think a lot of us spend a lot of time masterminding with other realtors and not enough time talking with other business owners. And this world is full of people who work from home now. And I just found this article really interesting because, because the people that get promoted and the people that are in leadership are the people that show up every day. And so if showing up to the office is distracting, then they have all these great like mobile offices now that you can go work at, or some people think going to a Starbucks is less distracting. But what I mean and Larry means by show up is like wherever you need to show up, show up. If it's the office, if it's just at your computer or wherever, but you need to go to work every day. And the office is a great place to be. Okay. So the personal notes line in up here. Like, so for me, when I wake up and I start reading things that are positive, I start, I, it's so crazy. I literally start thinking of people who did things for me. And so that, so it's the great time. He, he recommends two personal notes a day. And again, I'm gonna go back to the businesses, you guys. We get a lot of thank yous in our business from our title companies and our mortgage companies. And so we think like maybe we're a little used to it, but a lot of people don't get that. And I did a class one time and the president of Old Republic Title was in the classroom. And she was talking about how she spent $100,000 on realtors that year, on just events and lunches, two thank you notes, two thank you notes on $100,000 because people are just used to title companies paying for things. My first luxury deal came from my title company. Do your personal notes. People who, everybody, people who do nice things for you deserve a thank you. So all, all three of these things are part of Larry's system. As you get busier and busier, the hot list is people who want to buy right now. And this is just like focus and look at these lists every day. The people who want to buy right now, that's your hot list or sell. The warm list are is people who are thinking about it. So I was reading another article yesterday about the most stressful times in a person's life. Um, it can be, so it's marriage and divorce and death and death of a parent, um, so downsizing, adding to your family, um, there's all these different things, but they're all related to like, what's the next step? Moving, right? I mean, it, and so looking for those things on Facebook or in your neighborhood, if you hear that someone died, like you just said, you know that someone needs to move into assisted living or someone's kids are graduating high school. That's a huge key that like in May, notice all the graduation pictures on Facebook and check in with those people because they might be needing to downsize. So pay attention to life events. That's your warm list. That's people who are having a big life event and you think, yeah, they're probably gonna need to move. They're probably gonna need to move. That's the good check in, congratulations, no need to call, no need to reply. That's a really great, great one for that. And then your current business, of course, I hate it when my clients call me before I call them. You know how you wake up in the morning and you think, oh, I need to call this seller today. And then they call you first. Oh, I hate that. I hate that. So make sure you're looking at your current business. What you focus on expands. Basically look at the list of people you're currently helping in transaction and maybe you need your help. All right, number seven, real estate reviews. Do you all know how to do an RPR? Yes. Okay. All right. So this is, the, this is huge. <laughs> so this system, so the National Association of Realtors gives us this tool for free. In other states, appraisers use this tool to appraise homes. So what we do with our clients is we call it a modified appraisal. We make sure that they know that this is a valuable, valuable tool. And then he recommends, part of his system is to, to give two real estate reviews a week. Our title company, they, we shoot them the review from Monsoon and then they actually bind it and make it beautiful for us. It, it looks like a real appraisal. And then we just hand deliver it. So that's our pop by. I don't know if you know the Buffini system, but in luxury, this is huge, huge. And I actually have lawyer's title. So yeah. And that's who, Charlie. Yeah, lawyers does that. We get stacks.
massive RPRs delivered to our office, yeah. especially the business owners and professional, like the attorneys, fiduciaries, financial planners, to show them, they're like, how much does this cost? How much will you charge me? Nothing, we can't charge you, it's free. And, and we'll do it for your clients for you for free. It's a huge, huge, huge tool, and that's number seven in the system. Yeah, when we go to association events or conferences, like um, when it comes to the senior living, there's senior living conferences, there's the National Academy of Elder Law Attorneys that deals this with seniors, there's the American Fiduciary Association that deals a lot with seniors when fiduciaries get appointed by the court to go clear out a house. I mean, I could go by, go down the, the list of all the different associations that we work with because those are where all the people gather that work in the little superpower sphere that we want to work in. We take RPR reports. So instead of handing out just a bunch of business cards and flyers, we hand them an RPR report and say, you don't have to read this, but let me show you what this is. We can provide this to you within an hour in a PDF. And if you want something that's admissible in court, we can give it to you in 24 hours and have it bound by lawyer's title company and take them through an RPR report. Most of them are used to getting either a, just a one-page BPO or a CM, CMA. Neither one of those are admissible in court because it's only a one-page one opinion. And all those do is take the sales price divided into the square footage, come up with a price per square foot, and then multiply it by the subject house and say this is what it's worth. Nobody wants to pay attention to that when it comes to a, a, a court hearing. But when you come to an RPR report, which is really easy and it only takes you just a few minutes to put one together, you can make adjustments in there for improvements the house has made, things the house actually needs. Um, if, there, if there's uh, improvements that were made, but it's over time, it prorates it, just like what an appraiser does. If this one has a, has a really nice pool and that one doesn't have a really nice pool, you can make an adjustment for it. And it comes in a really comprehensive book. So be familiar with the RPRs. And we've learned that this is the most impactful thing that sets us apart from everybody else. Everybody else can tell what they're able to do. We can actually hand them a report and say, this is what we can give you and we don't charge for it. Yeah. That's the number one question. I say, well, how much does it cost? It's free. Yeah. And the money you make is a symbol of the value you create. So to be able to give this to people, um, even if, if you are holding an open house, to have that as an example for someone who's thinking of selling, I can run this for you, I can do this for you, complimentary. I need to see your house for it to be exact, but I'm happy to offer this to you. Have you know, we're business people, don't forget that. We want to be, we want to be somebody that they come to for advice. We want to have something they want, right? And then number eight, and we can brainstorm this a little bit because the this is probably the hardest part of the system. Um, the gentleman that said he's going to make 100 contacts a week, that's great, but I don't think it's sustainable unless you have or are on a team, right? Because you can't do it all, and 100 contacts is a lot, but he suggests 50 live contacts. So um, what are some ways? Do you guys have any thoughts on some ways that you can have 50 live contacts a week? What do you mean by live? Face-to-face. Face-to-face -face or, or phone. on the phone. Or on the phone. But not email, not text. Not Facebook. Live. Like you do contact? No, just 50 live contacts. Just staying contacts. in contact. So if you're a busy agent and you've got, you know, five to ten deals going on, there's five to ten right there. And then if you've got, you know, the warm list, tens, ten people, you know, you can, you can pretty much hit 30 pretty easy if you're busy. But what if you're not? Like, how do you... And what if you don't know anybody? So how alive is this live contact? I mean, is this something that you're gonna pick up the phone and call, or can you email them, can you give them a video? It, how no living does it need to be? It needs to be, you're connecting, remember? And okay. so either person to person, networking in group, teaching a class, or um, yeah, on the phone, calling. But that that's what, that's what the number is. Let me, let me give you an example how this can be hammered out in one day. I did, I did last week, and this is just me that each one of the people on our team tries to do something similar to this. So um, my lender came to me and said, hey, I want to introduce us to somebody at the Arizona State Bar Association because one of the spheres that we work with is attorneys. Attorneys have a lot of clients that have a need to sell properties for whatever reason, a divorce, a probate situation, a bankruptcy, but attorneys typically do that. So, and they want to have somebody that they can rely on. So 
she ended up making a connection with, <coughs> with the State Bar Association, and they told us what different events we could sponsor. We looked through a whole list of different sponsor events, and there was one that was a continuing education seminar for a full day with elder law attorneys, which fits right in our wheelhouse. I want to talk to those people. There's elder law attorneys that I don't already know. So our lender paid for it. She sponsored it. So it didn't come out of our, our pocket. We go down there and we took our RPR reports and we took a couple of little pamphlets that tell about what we do. And then we also did a, a little raffle of, I went to Costco and bought a, a $100 32-inch HD TV. And for everybody that put their card into a little uh, a drawing under a little jar, we pulled out to, to raffle off the TV. But I had comp, uh, conversation with each person as they gave me their business card. I made little notes on their business card and got the okay from them that we could set up a future coffee down the road. Some of them were willing to, some of them weren't. But nevertheless, there was 25 people there that I all got their cards and wrote all this stuff down. And I got to give a little presentation spiel about what was unique about us that I, I did in front of the whole group. So when I walked out of there, I had 25 face-to-face -face contacts out of one event with business cards from every one of them and commitments to have coffee with about half of them. I left from there and went to a Christmas party for an association that's called the Professional Association of Senior Referral Specialists, which is all senior living people. And I went there with business cards and I went to the little Christmas party and I went around and talked to about 25 more people and had a conversation about where I had been, told them little stories, told them about what we do, found out more about them. By the time I drove home that day, I had easily over 50 contacts. It was one day, and it was no big deal. And you look back on that and go like, well, that didn't seem like work. I went to a conference and met a bunch of people, and I went to a Christmas party and met a bunch of people. It's 50 contacts. And these are all the type of people that I'd like to have business with. And everybody that you know that's in your, your superpower sphere that you're wanting to get involved in, if you're thinking of something, there are places like this where they gather. There's associations. There's, there's trade associations. There's conferences, there's Christmas parties, I mean, there's just gatherings at the local pub if you want to go down and meet with a certain group of people. But you can go find groups of them all over the place if you have a relationship with them. This is, this can be your follow-up to a group drive. This can be a follow-up to something else you have party you threw or invitations to a party you're throwing or, I mean, if you're gonna work by referral, you're just gonna have to be in front of people or around people. That's just, I, I will say, I know that a lot of the beginning of classes, why, like, why not to do certain things? But honestly, if you don't like being around people or in front of people, that's why not to do this way, right? Like, then you probably should just do internet leads or something. But this, this working by referral is I love people, I love connecting with people, and that's all I do. And that's all I do. It, it, we, the most successful agent on our team gets up on Monday morning and she looks at her calendar from the week before and she says, who did I see? Who did I talk to? And then she fills the calendar with this next week of who do I need to talk to? Who do I need to follow up with? Who do I want to see this week? And she just starts calling and scheduling coffees and lunches, um, networking events. There's there's a networking website that you can go to, um, just Google networking in Arizona, and there are so many networking groups. You can pick what you're interested in. If you're a veteran, if you're into working out, if you're a vegan, you know, whatever you are, whoever you are, just know, like, know who you are because then you can be the most authentic. We have, we have someone in this office who was a firefighter and he's, he, like, his business blew up because they're like a family, right? They're, Firefighters, they like, they're like they like a brotherhood, and so they're loyal. You just need a brotherhood or a sisterhood, right? Like somewhere where you can, it's not hard to make those calls. Um, I have a Bible study I do on Wednesday night, so 16 people come to my house every week. That's 16 people, right? Right there. And then, you know, you just got to think of what else. That's part of our job is to think, where do I need to go next? Who do I need to call next? Who can I connect with next? That's the hard part, right? It's easy to help people buy and sell homes once you do it. The hard part is thinking, how can I, how can I meet more, and how can I connect deeper? Okay. If you don't have a database, it's like herding cats, right? Does everybody have one? Yeah. yeah. I will say, like, I think this is 
I'd love to hear what you guys use, though. We do use Shebang. I know you guys are familiar with Shebang. Um, and it is an ongoing challenge, right, to get people to get in that database and update it. And Because we're agents. We want to be with the people. We want to be out there. But if you don't have one, well, Christmas time is going to be hell because you're like trying to get it all gathered then so you can do your Christmas cards, right? Like that used to be me. I'm like, oh my gosh, I gotta send Christmas cards. I gotta go through my phone and go through my files and add to my database once a year, which that's not effective. So um, making sure that if you have, if you don't have a database, you, you need one that you use. So the one I use personally, I'm gonna tell you, we have Shebang as a team. But I use send out cards. Um, are you guys familiar with send out cards? So, so it's kind of cool because my last name's McCall. So on the back, they allow you to put your your branding on the back of a card, like if you're a realtor or whatever your business is. And mine just says McCall card. So it's kind of like kind of catchy. <laughs> and I I do I send people um, I send people picture cards and just with thank yous and you know, quotes and, you know, whatever, but they are so effective. So they're, they're a little more effective than handwritten notes because I literally get, like, calls. Thank you so much for the card. That's the nicest thing ever. Oh, my God. You know, so I get that. And handwritten, you don't usually get a call for the card. But anyway, I love I love my send-out cards, and you could use that um, <coughs> as a realtor. If, you know, it's it's definitely robust. and um, I got serious shaming. No, you gotta do handwritten. You gotta do handwritten. I'm oh like, no! No, but I can send it burning. <coughs> you know, the you know what? Right? Trucks handwritten, right? So what do you use? <coughs> so our our team uses Shebang, but and Sh S S H A S H A Bang. No, I think it's S H E B A N G. It's Jason Mitchell, um, Mark. I think is Carter in it. So anybody on staff here can point you in the right direction, or I can give you Amy's info. With shebang, um, it shebang. So shebang is not only a database; it's also a transaction management system. So if you're a solo agent, it's phenomenal. You can you can put your transactions in. It times when your inspections up. It times when your spuds are due. It 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 does everything for you. It's like having your own little mini assistant. You just have to get in it every day. But it's phenomenal, and I highly recommend it. It also sends. Uh, information to your clients that says, okay, your inspection period is about to run out, this is what we need to do next, or this is the next step. It just constantly keeps them updated. So you, I mean, you still should be, but if you don't, if you don't it doesn't fall through the cracks. It's a, good, it's a good net. It's a really good net. And I love the email after the inspection period's over where it says, next up is the appraisal period. And it just really, they did a great job of making sure that um, it, it is, it's your safety net. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to wrap it up, and I really hope you guys think about this and go into 2019. I'll share my goal for 2019 is to have two or 20 new business owner relationships. And so um, we joined the Scottsdale Chamber, and I'm not going in there to get real estate. I am going in there to meet good business owners so that I can be around people who are better than me, so that I can learn from them, because that's the number one reason, if you ask the president of the chamber why to join, he will say to learn and for education. And I am going in there to get more, to, to make my business more valuable to my clients, so that when my clients say I need a painter, I can say I have a great one, they're a member of the Scottsdale Chamber, they've got five stars on Better Business Bureau, you know what I mean? And so I'm literally just going in there with that intention, but I know, I know that I will get business from it, right? So you're not asking them to like use you exclusively, you're just sending them leads and kind of hoping that they'll send you leads back. Yeah. You know what happens? Um, our property management company, we use TCT property management, and I sent one of my clients to them and they took care of them and she sent me two leads. Yeah. And it's just, that's what happens. Like when you give people business, they want to give you business. It's just, I mean, don't you? Don't you? I mean, we have an agent on our team. We have a, a lender that, that takes care of so much for us in our office, but she has a lender that gives her deals. 
And so who do you think she feels loyal to? The one that's handing her clients. So it's the same with other businesses too. If I, I can say anything, it's to encourage you to know why you're spe special, you know, be grateful for all you have, show up to work, keep your list in front of you, create real value for your clients. Another thing that I didn't throw in and I want to uh, mention, oh my gosh, Chris, Chris Hogan, have you guys heard of him? He's with Dave Ramsey's company. He has a website where you can go on and see um, how much money you need to retire. So if you want to retire at 65 and you're gonna to live to 92 like he literally has you project how long you're gonna live He'll tell you how much money you need to save up or invest in order to You know retire at 68 and live to 92 So no like be a business person have business tools for your clients be valuable know the RPR system and then stay in front of your network and be organized through your database and that's that's what we do and um, we're always perfecting it we're, we're definitely it's practice not perfection for sure but um, thank you for your shares today I oh, love that thank you. Oh, thank yeah you. I really appreciate thank you, you guys for being coming. Awesome. Aww. <laughs> yeah you're welcome I yeah and she fosters dogs too I do puppies and children I love them um, and Joey good luck with your sale thank you very much yeah yeah, once you get that sold, it's just, it's easy from there. And do the just listed, just sold for luxury, because it works for luxury. I don't know if it's the weirdest for luxury, thing. Yeah, for luxury, it's a little bit different uh, with the uh, groceries and stuff out. Yeah, you have to send a nice piece, but I will tell you, um, I, I, got, got I got calls from them. You uh, got a call too? Yeah, I have a, I have a listing appointment. Bam. Yeah, I don't know why. It, it, I think it's the sophistication and the um, the age demographic sometimes. I mean, if you you're in older. Fountain Hills, that demographic does really well. If, if I was farming a 55 plus area, I would still do the mail stuff because it works. So Paradise Valley has, you know, I think the demographic the average age is 45, but a lot of them are older. Fountain Hills is 55. So, yeah. So, but yeah, I was going to mention that. It's So they don't know a realtor like someone who's here all the time. It's, right. it's cool. Yeah. Well, good luck to you. Thank and you then I'll probably see you at the next tour. Any uh, questions, questions before we no, good. Thank you. wrap it up? Thanks, you guys. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yay. Thank you.